Hi everyone, so I woke up on a mission and that is to tell you about why I take hydroxyurea. Um, I, when I share my reasons, usually I get, the reactions I get are, oh, I didn't know that, or, oh, I never thought about it that way. And so that's um, why I decided to do this video. I think it's important um, for all of us to share our experiences on, on a lot of this stuff and so that's why I'm doing this a little bit about me my name is Cassandra Trimnell I work with sickle cell 101 I um, live with sickle cell disease type SS I also have alpha thalassemia um, deletion which makes my SS milder so the last time I've been hospitalized for sickle cell was 2017 and the time before that was 2013 so as you can see I'm not hospitalized too often which is um, I guess intriguing and in, you know why I take uh, hydroxyurea as well um, I have had my right hip replaced I deal with chronic pain in you know chronic pain due to my right hip I have had acute chest syndrome three times. What else can I tell you? Um, just me as a person and just my health aspirations, I really gravitate towards the crunchy lifestyle. And that's, you know, for those who don't know, crunchy lifestyle is kind of like, you know, knowing what goes into your body, knowing what goes on your body, just you know, being aware of, you know, just the toxins and um, nutrition and reading labels and, and all of that. Am I just this beacon um, of this lifestyle? No, not anywhere close to it. But those are my, I guess, my lifestyle health aspirations, just treating sickle cell holistically and um, in using natural remedies. I grew up in a household where my mom was like, oh, did you know celery um, decreases? Um, inflammation and you know just telling me to eat healthier and so um, I guess that some of that rubbed off and those are my health aspirations um, so you guys I'm a noob at this I have notes <laughs> so bear with me um, I know you know just this whole hydroxyurea topic um, I, I think I would say my opinion I guess or why I take hydroxyurea is an unpopular opinion, um, but I nonetheless I want to share with you, hopefully just to lend perspective on why I take hydroxyurea. I'm not trying to sell you on it. I'm not telling you you shouldn't take it. I don't have any affiliations. I'm not getting paid or any of this. This is really just me sharing my experience with hydroxyurea with hopes to. Um, lend perspective to you or to, you know, spark um, something within you to to continue to research and um, learn more about hydroxyurea and, and everything pertaining to sickle cell. So um, that's a little bit about why I'm doing this video. Um, my history with hydroxyurea, uh, as I told you, you know, just growing up with my lifestyle, it wasn't for me. You know, I, I, I don't remember when it was first introduced to me, but um, it wasn't appealing to me. Um, it didn't quite fit in my lifestyle. This chemotherapy drug um, didn't, you know, I, like I said, I, I'd love to treat, if I could treat everything naturally, you know, with sickle cell, you know, I would do that and that's what I gravitate towards. Um, so I, I wasn't real warm about taking hydroxyurea. Um, it wasn't until 2013 when I ended up in the hospital for acute chest syndrome. Um, I think that's why I started taking it, um, because they said, oh, you're a candidate for it. Otherwise, you know, before I was like, why would I take it? I'm healthy, you know, or I'm healthy as I can be living with sickle cell disease. I don't get hospitalized too often. Like, why would I take it? Um, but after I got acute chest syndrome in 2013, I, I probably uh, took it for about six to eight months. Um, and then I um, found out I was pregnant with my daughter, who's four years old now. Um, 
And I, you know, after having her and breastfeeding and being a mom, I, it, I didn't feel any kind of need to, to take it, especially while breastfeeding and, and this and that. So I just didn't start it up again. And it wasn't until last year, I think it's been, it has been one year that I've been taking hydroxyurea. Um, and let me just, I guess, kind of walk you through my thought process on why I started taking it back last year, June 2018. For some reason, something just clicked inside of me. And, and you know, um, I guess it had been building over the years since being a mom as like, you know, self-preservation, self-preservation, self-preservation. I need to be around for my daughter. I need to be around here for my friends and for my family. I need to, I need to be around. And so something just clicked and I realized that there's going to be all these therapies, these new therapies for sickle cell and that I need to be as healthy as possible when I start taking these therapies because, you know, I, I, I need to be able to preserve my organs. I need to be able to, when I, you know, when or if I get the cure for sickle cell disease, I need to be able to do everything that I, I've ever wanted to do, you know, that I've always been limited. I need to be able to hike up mountains if I wanted to, or I need to be able to surf or do whatever else I want to do, you know? And so, um, and I needed to be here for my daughter. And so thinking about these therapies, you know, and knowing that these therapies, once they come out, they're not going to fix the damage that was already caused by sickle cell disease. They're not, they're going to start working from when you start taking them. And so I needed to make sure that I had a body that was healthy enough um, to healthy enough for, for when I get the care to carry on and live a full healthy life. I didn't want to have organ damage when I'm getting the care because that organ damage will still be there and it'll still be like I'm living with sickle cell indirectly. You know, I may not be sickling anymore, but I'm still dealing with, you know, the results of sickle cell. And I didn't want that. And so it, it just clicked. And I'm like, I need to preserve myself. And the way I do this, the only thing that we have here today is hydroxyurea to preserve ourselves. And so that's really kind of what put me over the edge. I mean, there's other stuff like I... I did research on hydroxyurea. There are a few facts that kind of resonated with me. Like, for example, you know, there's there's been, you know, 35 years of research for hydroxyurea. So it's the longest studied sickle cell drug, you know. And so um, three three decades of research um, kind of put my, my mind at ease. Um, what else stood out to me? was the fact that hydroxyurea, like I said, it doesn't just in increase your fetal hemoglobin, it protects your organs from damage. And that's huge. You know, a lot of us kind of dwell on, you know, the, the pain crisis because they are traumatic. They hurt like hell, like <laughs> what? Um, but, you know, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm sickling and my organs are being damaged. Oxygen isn't being delivered well. Like, I'm, you know, in the minimal pain that I am talking to you right now, the, I guess the real um, danger is that I'm sickling right now. And um, there's nothing I can do about that. I, I live with sickle cell disease. You know, sickling is going to happen even if we're not in pain, even if we're feeling our best, we're still sickling. Um, and so that was really what helped kind of, I guess, solidify my decision and in, in that that the fact that you know hydroxyurea helps you know it's an anti-sickling um so it helps you know protect my organs and protect the tissues and protect my body um from from the damage of of, of sickling and you know sickle cell disease and um <clears throat> the third thing was that I, I read that hydroxyurea lowers mortality rates. So that fits right into my self-preservation um, aspirations. Um, so I, you know, people who are taking hydroxyurea are living longer. And so when I found that information, 
that fit right in, like I said, and it resonated with me. And um, it was something that helped decide to start taking it. And I think lastly, I have, you know, people within the healthcare community who, who treat sickle cell disease. And, you know, I, I ask them, you know, face to face, is this something that I need to be on? And these are people that I've known for years now who really have, you know, they really care for me and I care for them. And they said, absolutely. You know, um, this is something that helps people with sickle cell. And um, <clears throat> let me just say that hydroxyurea doesn't necessarily work the same way in everybody, to be honest. It's not a one size fits all. And there may be people out there who don't benefit from hydroxyurea. I'm not sure, but I know there are, you know, there's just a wide range of people and experiences with hydroxyurea. To me, hydroxyurea doesn't really help me on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't see changes like, you know, and like I said, like I, I was hardly ever hospitalized. So I don't really see the changes in my lifestyle. Like I still deal with fatigue and, and this and that. But I know that um, there's less sickling. And so that kind of gives me peace of mind. Like I'm doing something um, good for myself. You know, I'm, I'm preventing sickling. And so even though I don't see like, you know, major health changes, um, that's why I continue to take hydroxyurea because I know, you know, with my counts and everything, my, like, you know, there's, there's less sickling and that's, um, that's what's kind of settled things for me. Um, in terms of just, uh, side effects and, 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 you know, all the kind of the myths around hydroxyurea, um, I read that hydroxyurea doesn't increase your risk for cancer. So, Go out there and do your research on this. I can put links below, but, you know, read those and then, you know, just do your research on this as well. You know, take the time to do this. Make sure you know what's going into your body or what's not going into your body. You know, just take the time to learn about this. Um, as for pregnancy, um, I, you know, I had my daughter. Uh, she's healthy. She has way too much energy. <laughs> but other than that, she's a healthy four-year-old girl. So I can't really uh, speak to, you know, just side effects with pregnancy and hydroxyurea because I have a healthy uh, baby girl. Um, I can't speak to sperm count either other than the fact that I know that it may decrease sperm count or lower sperm count. Um, but I think what I would say to that, and you know, I'm I'm not a guy, so I, I can't speak to it fully. So take this, you know, with a grain of salt. But I think um, the trade-off is worth it. You know, lower sperm count is worth, um, you know, protecting just my organs and a better quality of life. Um, same thing with hair loss. I personally don't have hair loss um, with hydroxyurea. But if I did, I would think that, hair loss would be a small, you know, price to pay compared to, um, organ damage. And so that's, um, that's how I reason with that. I do have nail discoloration. And so I get my nails done. Um, that's my quick fix to the nail discoloration. I have it on my, you know, my fingers and my toes. Um, that is something I deal with. I do not deal with nausea. I know a lot of people say that hydroxyurea causes nausea for them. I don't deal with that, so I can't speak to that personally. All I can to do is advise you to, to speak to a healthcare provider on that. I, I'm, I don't think hydroxyurea is supposed to cause nausea, but like I said, don't take my word for it. I'm not a healthcare provider. I'm just here lending my, you know, what I know and my experiences on hydroxyurea. So definitely double check and do your own research on that. Um, so that's that's really why I started taking hydroxyurea. Um, it was just, so, you know, I went through those facts and um, they really resonated within me. The people I care about said I should take it. Um, 
you know, I came to the self-realization I need to be around. And um, just speaking more into that, it is so heartbreaking going down my Facebook timeline and seeing people pass away from sickle cell or from complications of sickle cell when we're so close to these treatments, guys. We're so close. There's going to be a treatment that, you know, fingers crossed, there's going to be a treatment that comes out as early as next year, guys. Next year. So, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Um, what my humble advice is to live gently. Treat yourself very well. Self-care. Drink your water. Like, this This treatment comes out next year. I need y'all to live in a bubble. Like, live in a bubble. Don't go out. Don't... Um, don't do anything that triggers a sickle cell pain crisis. Don't go out in cold weather. Just stay put just for that year. Like, just stay put and treat yourself as gently as possible, guys. Because I just, I can't see any more of you losing your life to sickle cell disease when we're so close. We're so close. So, um... That's my humble suggestion. Just take good care of yourself. And in this, I guess, this this um, journey of, of self-preservation and self-care, a lot of it has to do with you doing your research. Don't take my word for it. I'm just one person on the internet. You need to go out and look things up. Make sure they're coming from reputable sources, you know, Double check things. Even your friends uh, on on social media who have sickle cell disease may not always be right. They may not have the facts right. So make sure you're double checking a lot of this stuff. Speculate on everything. Make sure you ha get reputable sources. Talk with healthcare providers. Definitely talk with your friends within the sickle cell community. I mean, we all have our experiences and we all benefit from hearing each other's experiences. But make sure you do holistic research instead of just taking one person's opinion or one article's opinion or one doctor's opinion. Make sure you get second and third and fourth opinions um, and, and, and facts <laughs> beyond opinions, but like facts. Make sure you are double checking and fact checking everything that you see on the internet because there's a lot of bad information out, out there. Um, and so that's that's what I would say to all of this is just take good care of yourself. We're in self-preservation mode, guys. Make sure you're self-preserving. Preserve yourself for the cure. Preserve yourself for the you know treatments coming soon to us, okay? Um, and do your research. That's all I got. Thank you guys for listening. I really appreciate it. Please share your experience with uh, hydroxyurea. It may not be a good one, but I'd still love to hear it. It may be, you know, um, you know, wonderful. I'd still love to hear it. I, I, I thrive off of hearing other people's experiences, and I love to share your guys' experience when while I'm doing sickle cell education. So please um, share what you feel, what your thoughts are, what did you think about my reasoning for taking hydroxyurea, let me know. I, I'd love to hear um, what you all have to say about it. And thank you guys. Bye.